Hello, this is Mark Tucker. Welcome back to part two of creating a Chrome extension using AngularJS. Today's topic is services. If you go to the Angular Chrome EX uh, repository here on GitHub, you'll notice that there's two commits. Now, this, I renamed this first commit, which is um, what we had at the end of part one of this series, which just shows you how to create um, a basic Chrome extension and use AngularJS in the process. Uh, today we're going to, the second commit is going to show how we can add a service to that. So you can actually go here and get the uh, final source code. But we're going to talk about a couple different options on how we might include a service in this uh, Chrome extension. So just as a review, we have a Chrome extension that when we click on it, it's going to look at the current page that we're on and grab some page information from that and then it's going to uh, go through and find all the different anchor tags that start with HTTP or HTTPS that are on this page and, and show those um, in this uh, extension. So that's what the extension does. Um, in case uh, you need a little refresher, and here we have an extension, Chrome, uh, Angular Chrome EX. Uh, actually, pay attention to this other one. Um, that we have, we're using this pl plugin um, called Angular JS Batarang, um, which is going to help us a little bit in um, what we do today. So let's go ahead and take a look at code. We'll uh, briefly review where we're at. Remember we have a basic pop-up page that's uh, sprinkled with some Angular JS code. Um, in the pop-up um, we have an app that we're defining a controller on now. The app is uh, just an Angular module that we've named and then to that module we're adding a controller and in that page controller we're injecting in the scope. And now scope is a place where we can uh, keep information and we're setting different items on the scope here. And what this uh, extension is doing is using Chrome to uh, figure out what the active tab is and use uh, some information off that active tab to set the uh, title and the URL um, of this, the page that we're currently on. And then we send a message to the content script, which is associated with the code that's running in the currently active tab. And that's going to uh, go through and scrape using jQuery all the different um, anchor tags and return that back in this response as page infos and then we're going to call uh, scope apply so that all of those changes to the scope are going to be reflected in our pop-up. So that's what the the extension does but I'm not really happy with all of this code here in the the controller that's this Chrome specific code and so what I would like to do is I would like to be able to um, make a change to that and I would want to use a service to do that. So now there's a couple different options that we have for services. Um, so we'll just kind of look through what the different options might be. But what I'd like to do is be able to inject not only this scope but also this page info service um, into the uh, application um, here and I would like to be able to get rid of all of this uh, specific stuff and just call a page info service uh, get info. Um, so that's what I would like to be able to do. And in order to do that, then I would need to have a service. And there's a couple different ways of adding a service, uh, but this we'll just use this approach here where we're actually on that same module. We're going to add a service. Here's the page info service. And what I'd like to be able to do is inject in the scope into the service just like I'm injecting the scope into here. And then um, when they call, uh, when we call it get info, then we'll do the same code that we had in before, but wherever we're accessing the uh, scope, it would be the scope that we've injected in. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, how that would look. So we've just refreshed, um, saved the code there. We're going to go in here and reload the extension and then go ahead and take a look at what we have here. And, Turns out that that doesn't work. Um, there's an error. Well, let's take a look at the, what the error is. If we look in the uh, console, then we hit this unknown provider. So that says in the page info service, the scope, um, the, the scope provider. There's there's not a known provider. And what that's trying to tell us is that services actually are singletons in Angular JS, and so they don't have access to that same scope that. Uh, that the page controller or that any controller does and so we can't use that uh, scope 
but we do have access to root scope. So let's go ahead and try that and see if we like that option. And what we're going to do here is the you know, same code um, injecting in the service, calling get info, but this time the page info is injecting in the root scope. And uh, then anywhere throughout here where we're making changes, uh, we're getting uh, that set on the root scope. Now uh, let's reload that and see if that's going to work for us. All right, reload. And sure enough, that works. Uh, but this may not be exactly what we want. Um, if you notice here, I've got this Angular JS um, tab here now because I have that other ex uh, extension and it's enabled. Uh, should be see be able to see scope here, but I think there's a, an issue with um, when things are getting loaded. But something that's nice here in the Elements tag um, tab, I can go here to the app and I can go down here to this Angular JS, and it's showing that at this um, level in our DOM, then there is um, the, there's an ID of two for the scope, and there is no parent, and that um, on that we have here's our page infos, and here is our title and URL. Um, But then if we go down here to a, the controller, then it's actually, there's an ID of three and the, there's a parent and the message is actually set down here. Um, so what that's saying is, is that, and, and we'll walk through code and it'll make it a little bit easier to see, but part of the scope is actually being set down here on the child and part of the scope is being set up here on the root. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, Let's reload this. So the controller gets started first, and on this scope and this controller, uh, we can look at that um, down here with the scope and dollar sign ID. So yes, that's uh, just confirming that this controller is a child uh, scope uh, because we can see if there's a parent, and we can see what the parent's ID is. So message is actually down here on the child but then when we're in here then we can look at root scope and confirm that that is definitely a, a different um, scope than the child and it's the same as the root scope so what's happening is part of our um, items like our messages set down here on the child scope and all the title the URL and these page infos are set on the on the parent scope. And the way that this works is that if you're down here in the child scope and you're asking for something and it's not there, it will go up and look in, in parent scopes all the way up to the root. And so that's how we're able to find it. But I don't like the fact that part of the scope is here and part of the scope is there and it just kind of works because of this uh, scope inheritance. So let's go ahead and see what we can do differently. So we tried using scope, uh, injecting in scope, we tried injecting in root scope. So let's try something different. What if we were to uh, go ahead and pass uh, the, the scope in from the controller um, into the service? So here the page info service is injected into the controller. We're calling uh, the get info method on that uh, service and we're passing the scope in. And so here um, the scope is showing up as my scope and so throughout here every place where the scope is being um, affected it's using my scope so that's now actually using the same child scope in both cases and that should just work uh, work just fine for us so we'll reload and yep sure enough that works good and but I'm not excited I think about having uh, some of the scope being set in here and some of the scope being set in here and the fact that the service actually knows um, about scope and knows about angular js so the next option that we have is to go ahead and uh, keep all of the scope stuff down here and actually have the um, the function on our service return a callback uh, which is then going to return the information. So let's walk through this. Our controller gets injected in the scope and this page info service. Uh, 
It's going to go ahead and set some information on this scope here down here in the child scope. And, and then we're going to call the page info service this get info and we're going to pass it this callback function which when it calls back in the info we're going to go ahead and have um, be able to set the, uh, the get the title the URL and the page infos from that and then we can call apply um, so that's all nice and packaged up that so this has got some um, scope specific stuff uh, angular js stuff in here but if you look in the service then it's, uh, we're not injecting anything into the service and in this method we're going to have a callback and we uh, create our model and we call our different methods that are Chrome specific and we set the, the title and the URL on the model and the page infos and then we call this callback which then um, returns it back nicely and, and everything gets updated. And what I like about this approach is that really with uh, this pop-up, there's not a lot uh, that's to it. We, I could probably use this in the same, if I want to do a Safari extension um, and a Firefox plugin, uh, IE, I could probably use this HTML again and I could use this Angular um, code here again and this pop-up here, I could use the same controller here because the controller has nothing specific to any specific browser. The only thing that contains browser specific information is this service and so I could actually have a separate file that was just my service and then depending on which uh, plugin I was developing then I would use a different service that, that would then get injected into the same controller so I would be able to do a lot of code reuse. So uh, that's I think this is going to be our final version and uh, we'll go and double check that that uh, is going to work for us. And. Sure enough, uh, we've got what we want. And if just a reminder that you can get this code over here at the Angular Chrome EX um, repository here in GitHub. And this second commit here is what the final uh, approach of what we talked about today. Thank you.